the Pendulum Lab analysis. Hi guys, I uh, hope you guys had a great experience doing your Pendulum Lab on Friday and uh, I'm here today to kind of go over what uh, your results should have been or something like these. Uh, my mom is doing a little bit better each day. Uh, it's going to be a really long process though so I uh, hope you're patient with me uh, and my need to be uh, back here with my parents. So uh, check out the uh, rest of the video and uh, hopefully you had a great success with your lab. I thought you'd enjoy seeing uh, what uh, weather looks like so I took a picture of the rental car I had the other day uh, or I have uh, the other day after a little bit of a snow uh, snow storm um, not much of a storm but uh, laid down about four inches of snow on on the car by the way I'm in uh, New Hampshire I think I said that in either video at uh, Dartmouth Hitchcock uh, Hospital by Dartmouth University in uh, New Hampshire so um, we we're lucky we missed the uh, big storm that uh, hit the East Coast uh, just uh, yesterday. When you're watching the uh, video here, you'll notice that uh, a red uh, splash will come up on the screen, like this one right. I can't do this right there, let's say. That's a nasty fingernail. Uh, anyway, uh, that little splash will say pause video. And when you see those, um, you're supposed to pause the video and take notes. Um, I didn't do a very good job of kind of typing up the uh, what I'm saying on here so you're gonna have to do a really good job of kind of pausing the video and taking notes periodically as I'm yapping and answering the questions and that kind of a thing so uh, do your best to uh, summarize what I say um, in between the pause video indicators while you're taking uh, the best notes possible all right good luck as you review your pendulum lab okay so now onto the pendulum lab and reviewing that so what we discovered early on when you're doing your explorations is that uh, most of us feel like, hey, the weight should matter. If I add more washers, it should have caused uh, a variation in the time it took the pendulum to swing back and forth. It's a period of oscillation, if you will. Uh, in our lab, we just did, we actually measured 10 periods. Um, or 10 oscillations, the time for 10 oscillations. But anyway, we found out that washers, the weight of the pendulum didn't vary the time. It still oscillated with the same period. So in your investigation Friday, though, we varied the length. And hopefully you did see that when we varied the length, the, the uh, time it took to oscillate 10 times actually increased. But that increase is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data. Now, your data made a looked a little bit different, but pretty much I think it should have been uh, very much like mine here. As long as you were taking good data and you did a good job measuring the length of their string uh, to the center of mass of the washers, and you did a great job timing exactly uh, when it started and stopped after 10 cycles or oscillations, then uh, your data should have looked a lot like these numbers here. And uh, so what we see is that there is an increase in uh, the time it took to oscillate when we increase the length. But what we notice here, since the length is increasing constantly, uh, the time didn't seem to increase constantly. It increases a lot at the beginning, and how much it increases actually decreases. So we get a curve that looks like this when we plot and you guys do a great job plotting with your independent variable here and your dependent variable here and time versus length, dependent versus independent and uh, you've numbered properly equally spacing out the numbers uh, but when you did that you would get a curve and your it's a curve of best fit and so when you looked at your pink reading graph sheet you should have noticed this as a curve that describes something that's increasing but at a decreasing rate uh, and so that's the, the relationship, and that's what science is all about. Science is about uh, cause and effect. The causal agent here was length. The effect was that it increased the time for 10 oscillations. And uh, so science is all about building relationships between these variables. 
Uh, so that's uh, the data that we're going to look at when we evaluate the questions that you went through. Before we do that, though, another big part of science uh, besides the data is to qualitatively describe things, too. And uh, we do that uh, often in science with illustrations. Now, if it's just a picture and it doesn't have any labeling, then it's really not an illustration. So to make this an illustration, we have the uh, information that we need for the lab that we did. So in this case, we wanted to show where length was. We measured at the center of mass. We also wanted to show where the dependent variable is, the time for 10 oscillations, and then what the equipment is like. And we like to show it in action, if at all possible. So let's take a look at uh, the questions you had and, and uh, how you may have analyzed those. So it said to look at the time uh, versus length graph. And as the length increased on the horizontal axis, does the time change? And yes, it did. And uh, so did the length affect the time it took the pendulum oscillate? Yes, it increased it. But um, it didn't increase it linearly. It increased it at an increasing uh, rate. Or sorry, increase at a decreasing rate. So uh, that is uh, the first question. So the question, second question: What timing errors were present in the lab? Explain how timing errors affected your data. Well, the one that's kind of obvious is that we humans don't react to things exactly as they happen. It takes us a little while to process information visually and uh, to react kinesthetically to start a stopwatch or to stop it. Um, and that reaction time is typically around 0.1 to 0.2 seconds. That's why we um, that's why we did 10 oscillations and not just one. Because if you would have started and stopped, our data would have been off by 0.1, about 0.2 uh, two tenths of a second here. But when we time 10 oscillations, we could actually decrease the error by a factor of 10. So we're only off by about 0 0.02. So our data can be a lot more accurate by timing 10 than just by timing one, because we reduce the effect of the reaction time. Another thing, though, with timing errors is the other variable, the length. If we didn't, if you didn't adjust the length just perfectly, exactly to 0.2 meters or 0.4 and so forth, then as since the length affects the time for oscillation, it would have had an effect and created a timing error as well. Uh, the next question: If the string gets longer, what uh, happens to the time of oscillation? explain why. That's the critical part. We've already seen that as the string length increased, the time of oscillation increased at a decreasing rate. But uh, the explanation of why. Well, if you look here, for a given, this is a tough one. If you didn't quite get this, don't be bothered by it. Um, as we increase the length for a given angle of oscillation, uh, let's start with this one. This is a particular arc length based on this length of string at that angle, but if I increase the angle and stay in that angle and double it to here, notice that the arc length is significantly longer um, even though it's oscillating through the same angle. And so uh, because of that, the uh, length of the string means it's swinging through a longer arc length. And so even though it's swinging faster initially here because it's pulled out, uh, uh, if I pull out further, it's going to go faster. So that's why we have to be um, considering being at the same arc or angle that we pull it back um, when we're talking about the explanation of why. So uh, the last one, how can you use a pendulum to measure time? Well, uh, a pendulum can tick-tock. A pendulum can go back and forth and if we adjust the string length of the pendulum uh, to just the right length, which happens to be around uh, 0.245 centimeters, then uh, adjusting to that length would mean that we could have the pendulum oscillate in one second. And so it could tick tock once every second, and we could create a little clock. And that's exactly what Galileo did when he discovered the uh, pendulum clock. So again, if we look right here, here's 0.2 and here's 0.4, 0.3, 0.25 roughly right here, 0.25. If I go straight up, boom, and straight over, boom, notice that I'm between 0.8 and 1.2. I'm right at one second. So my pendulum, if it was right around 
0.245 centimeters it's going to oscillate every second and we've created a clock. All right, rounding out the questions here. Number five, look at the time versus length graph. Use your pink reading graph sheet to describe the graph from the lab results. Uh, and we've already beaten the horse on this one. Uh, so if we look at this again, we know that as the length increases, the time increases, but at a decreasing rate. Um, so that's, again, the answer to that one. Uh, six, what is another independent variable that might affect the pendulum's time of oscillation? Well, something else that came up a little bit in your exploration is that if I pull the pendulum back a little bit further and let it go, it might oscillate uh, with a different period. Instead of if I pulled it back barely, or if I pulled it back more, if I pulled it back even more, that it might oscillate with different um, periods. A lot of you said that it would take longer to stop, which of course it did. Um, however, if you uh, pulled it back further and let it go, it would oscillate, it would have the same time for 10 oscillations regardless of how far you pulled it back. That's mind-blowing too, that it actually has no effect. Um, but that's one possible one. And you should test it on your own sometime just to check it out. But it's kind of cool that it does not have an effect, just like weight does not have an effect. So it doesn't matter how far you pull it back, it'll oscillate the with the same time for 10 oscillations, uh, regardless of how far you pull it back. Uh, and then uh, the last one here that you can maybe think of that uh, could affect the pendulum is really for question seven. If you took your pendulum to the moon, describe how it might oscillate differently. And so if we've imagined ourselves on the moon, if we pull it back and let it go, would it go as fast as it does here on Earth? No, it would actually go a lot more slowly. Because if we think about it, the reason it falls is because of gravity. And Earth, being a larger planet, having more mass, has more gravity, and will actually accelerate this on its downward uh, pull more than it does on the moon. So it'll pick up more speed than it does on the moon. And so on the moon, it would go much more slowly than it does here on Earth. Some students will say it'll just sit there and float because there's no gravity on the moon. Ooh, that's not correct. There is gravity on the moon. It would oscillate, but much more slowly. Um, if you're out in the middle of interstellar space where there were no planets around, you would be correct. If you pulled it here and let it go, it would just sit there. It wouldn't be pulled down because you wouldn't have gravity, anything causing a gravitational pull around. So that's true for in your in the middle of space, but if you're on the moon, it would go, it would just go more slowly, and so that's a cool thing. This little pendulum of ours could actually test the strength of gravity, and so gravity could actually be something that a pendulum could measure. But I don't think we're going to be going to the moon anytime soon, so uh, we'll leave that for a discussion uh, for another day. The last comment I want to make uh, isn't on your questions here, but it's associated with any data that you get. Um, when we create a relationship between these variables, uh, we can see that relationship right here, then length and time for 10 oscillations are interconnected. So another thing a pendulum can actually be used to measure or is the length. Um, if we flip these around, for, in other words, so in your math class when you solve for x, what you're really doing is flipping these axes. So if I flip these axes, this actually would be kind of like a parabola. It's flipped around the other way, like this, curving up. But for now, we're just going to look at it as this is the dependent variable axis, and this is the independent variable axis. And doing that, let's say I took the length here and I made it some random length and I didn't check with a meter stick I just made it some random length here and uh, set it and then I timed it and I timed 10 oscillations well now this is our independent variable and uh, um, I'm sorry I timed the time and it took 1.4 seconds to go 10 times well, 1.4 seconds is right here, so I could go over, and then right where they, it intersects with the line of best fit, right here, I could drop straight down, and I could estimate that this uh, string length is right around 0.46, that's 0.5, so about right around 0.46 meters long. And so really a pendulum 
in addition to time, a pendulum can measure length and it could also measure gravity uh, and so forth. Uh, so those are the three things that a pendulum can measure. Length, uh, time, and then how much is being pulled, which is gravity. Three things a pendulum can measure. Length, time, and gravity. You might want to write that down somewhere to remember that for your test. Hint, hint. And Scratch's parting thought. Oops.